Hi everyone, so today I'm doing a, a short experiment on uh, how Chopin daily life was working. Apparently Chopin was waking up uh, quite late, so it's exactly now 9.30, which is late for me because mostly I wake up at 6.30 and if you would compare with other people uh, like Liszt or other composers, they woke up early and early is like 4 or 5, so like so let's say 9.30 is late, but maybe he woke up even later, maybe he woke up at 10 or 11. Um, and then apparently he had a breakfast uh, in his bed, so like I'm doing now. Having my coffee, just very comfortable. So Chopin was together with um, um, Georges Sand, a writer. She was a very manly uh, woman, was smoking cigar, wearing pants. At that time was a bit shocking. Uh, she was introduced, by the way, by Liszt. Chopin and Georges Sand were introduced together by Liszt. Uh, Liszt was a friend of Chopin and a friend of Georges Sand, knew both. And um, Georges Sand admired Chopin a lot, so they had a kind of relationship. Um, Georges Sand actually had children, children already, and she was a rich, rich woman from the aristocracy. She had a castle on the south of Paris. Yeah. And uh, he spent, they spent the summer in this castle, and um, like they had a big garden, so he was a bit more free to, to do anything he wants. Basically, he was only composing when he was there. Well, because in Paris he had his apartment, uh, Place Vendôme, it's now the place in Paris where you have all the diamonds and the, the, the expensive shops, like uh, the big brands. It's a nice place, it's a nice square. Um, Chopin was teaching there mostly, composing too, but giving a lot of lessons to aristocracy. And he liked actually the crowdy uh, movement life of city of Paris. And then when he was in the countryside in the castle of Georges Sand, he felt a bit more. Uh, he had more mood jumps apparently. Um, but he he had more quiet environment to compose. So he was composing all day. So the routine of Chopin is not very complicated to imitate. It's just basically waking up late, having breakfast, and then composing all day or playing music all day. But then what's interesting is Georges Sand is actually explaining how he was composing. Uh, I lost the page, but I remember. Um, and that's what I will try to see today, actually. Yeah, so I will try this, finish my breakfast, and then I will go back, I will do uh, composing. Well, actually not compose because I don't compose, but I will practice Chopin pieces and uh, try to think how he was composing, because they explained the composing process there. Other stuff he was doing, so he was giving only one lesson to uh, the shop, to Georges Sand's daughter, Solange, or yeah, Solange. And I actually have also, I have only three lessons today, so I can kind of relate to this. So I finished showering, I was putting some nice clothes on, because we know Chopin was actually a very dandy person. Uh, he liked being dressed very well uh, when he lived in Paris. Uh, the reason is also he earned a lot of money as a piano teacher, because he was actually charging if I remember correctly, something like 300 gold coins from that time. Now, I did some research to find out how much this is, but I could not find uh, any information about. But we could find out by evaluating how much the most famous piano teacher today would earn. And I think it would be something around $300 an hour, maybe, or something like this, or maybe a bit more. And so he earned a lot of money with piano lessons. He gave a lot of piano lessons when he was in Paris. Mostly he was actually giving piano lessons. And um, well, then he was just spending the money on his clothes and on his uh, carriage because he didn't want to go for, with a no normal carriage. You know, this stuff with a horse that's uh, like the car of, the, of that time of the 19th century. He liked to go uh, with a very expensive carriage uh, and yeah, spend all his money on this. So yeah, like I'm also trying to dress up a bit uh, nicely today to have my Chopin day. And I will probably spend some time uh, exploring how Chopin was composing. Let's see this. And reading in this book, actually, Georges Sand is talking about uh, how Chopin spent his day in Noir, so this castle in the south of Paris. He woke up late, he had breakfast in his bed, and then he spent all day composing, and composing until 6 uh, in the afternoon. And uh, she's describing a bit how he was composing, like uh, apparently by sometimes walking, he had an ID coming, and then he was very impatient to go try it on the piano. He had a play L in this castle with uh, Georges Sand. And he would try out this ID and then try to get to get around with it. So he and then he would try to get the perfect version of it. So he would apparently what she's describing. He would sometimes try for weeks to 
get one measure perfect or one page maybe perfect and uh, then would cry, scream, walk around, being annoyed, being angry and, and, and being um, impatient to find it. And then mostly what happened is after some weeks he actually came back to his first ID, so he kind of uh, struggled for nothing. And then she suggested him to maybe try to stick to his first ideas because they seem to be the best one most of the time. And he didn't like this. He said like she didn't understand and like it so that, that didn't work. And then she, she said he could be very uh, scary when he became angry. Um, can you imagine? He must have been a very difficult and complicated person. So I, th I was thinking how, how does it sound when Chopin has an ID, tries it on the piano and how does it change it? And I think the closest version we have is in the waltzes, for example, we have this in some Nocturne too. We have sometimes two editions of the same waltz, for example. And we have the Fontana version, which is a, an editor. And then we have the first manuscript, the autograph uh, version. And I think that's maybe the closest we can get to what kind of difference he was looking for. So, for example, this waltz here. <laughs> the other version, so this was the Fontana version, the manuscript version. First difference here. Second difference, yeah. second time and then now and there this thing he also changed the rhythm completely because it used to, to be to start on the beat to do group of five and then a triplet and now he's just doing not starting on the first beat and doing a group of eight so that's how, how he must have struggled he was probably trying this and trying then standing up and being impatient and coming back and trying again this kind of stuff probably he was trying and the same here yeah, which sound better hmm. find a new version. That's too happy. Too happy. It's more it's a bit sadder. And you find this also in many Chopin works you can see like in most of the works you have stuff that come back. And when in Chopin works when stuff come back there is always a little difference the second time and a little difference the third time and then he's accent accentuating some notes or sometimes he's doing the left hand like this so there is a B flat in the middle, there is a G in the middle second time he's doing the opposite, first the G then the B flat or sometimes he's just doing twice B flat or twice G this kind of difference also he was careful so
then another thing is uh, brings me to another idea. So why would be uh, that's an interesting thing if you if you observe some stuff in the, in different version he didn't change. These must have been very clear ideas, or this could be more clear ideas. And then if you see differences, um, these probably ideas that were less clear for him, or was struggling a bit more to settle down for for an idea. Which brings me to another conclusion: is like I know some people find Chopin's, uh, you know, holy. You should not change anything, and I kind of disagree. One because I like to change stuff myself. Some people don't, maybe. Um, I remember I was reading Liszt change a lot of stuff in Chopin works and Chopin didn't like it but Chopin is dead so like he's not there anymore to complain and I mean there are many cases of composers who who actually listen to a pianist and they like the way he's playing it and he's when he's playing it a bit differently so like Rachmaninoff was very happy with how Horowitz played his piano concerto um, Chopin liked actually how Liszt was playing his etudes he was a bit jealous on how Liszt was playing his etudes so Liszt playing Chopin attitude. So there are many examples where the composers also like a pianist version of, of his work. Means they were also open for other options, if the options were good, of course. And I'm not comparing myself to Horowitz and Liszt, of course. Uh, I don't say I have the same genius idea in words, but it just shows me um, that it's not the text of uh, the composition is not holy. It's something, I think you have some freedom to change stuff. Now, not just for free like this, uh, for fun, like, I think it's some stuff that should come with, if you know the work very well and if you practice a lot, sometimes some new ideas come out and I think there you are free to change if you want. And of course, it's a personal opinion. So as conclusion, um, now I didn't do the whole day until uh, 6 p.m. Uh, there is no big surprise, I guess, uh, composing the whole day. It's like practicing the whole day I did this. And then at 6, actually, I had lunch with Georges Sand. They had dinner with Georges Sand. Then they had uh, a walk and then they did some music and uh, reading books in the evening. And then he went to sleep early and Georges Sand started to work on her books. And then he woke up again late so actually he was sleeping a lot uh, see he really went to sleep early and woke up late so seems like a lazy life uh, now his life was made easy by his girlfriend George Sand, of course because she took uh, everything in charge and he could just focus on composing so it was a kind of homage to his genius that she wanted to uh, give him and he didn't always have an easy life of course he as a child he traveled a bit, he was uh, actually the main thing with Chopin, he was always sick, he had this tuberculosis that 
he touched when he was around seven and that got worse all his life and he finally died from this. And uh, this probably has an impact on his work too, like the spirit of his work, the, the, the kind of sad, uh, always sick person, I think, something you feel in his work. Um, now his composing process, um, compared to Liszt, for example, who was doing tons of other stuff. Now Liszt lived twice longer, so he had time to do more. Um, but still Chopin actually, um, mean, if you have a look at all Chopin work, all his works are kind of perfect, finished, and there is nothing to throw away. But he wrote less stuff. And in Liszt's work, I would say, although I love Liszt a lot, um, in his 700 works, like maybe one third or one fourth is really are really great works and he redid them three, four times sometimes. And the other one, he led them like this. And the, most of the transcription of other works are not so interesting. There are many paraphrases that are really nice, but some are a bit too much. So Liszt was a bit less a perfectionist, maybe also because he did a lot of other stuff. Now he still reworked his work three, three four times, the one he thought were really worth doing it probably. So there is a difference. You can see Chopin was a, a more perfectionist. He wanted to leave behind anything which, what was not like he liked. Um, yeah, interesting process. And I think you feel this in his work too when you play it. Like it's uh, Chopin works are uh, quite finished and perfect in every way. Um, yeah, I must explain how, why it was like this. So I hope you enjoyed the video, um, hope this motivates you to practice a bit more Chopin and listen to it. Uh, strangely enough, Chopin, well not strangely enough, that's the reason why Chopin is one of the most played and listened composer, like anyone who doesn't like classical music at least like, like Chopin, it's very interesting to notice. And also interesting stuff is he's the only composer of, one of, he's one of the only composer and the only one I know that composed only for piano, with some very small exceptions. So he was really a com piano composer, something worth to say. So I hope this video was interesting for you and you learned some new stuff. Uh, I was enjoying doing this video and see you next uh, experiment or next recording.